welcome to Digital Learning. I'm Connie Colosi, the Director of Media Text and Digital Learning. On our episode today, we are going to be visiting the Tyrone Middle School Center for Innovation and Digital Learning. And we're going to be hearing about their implementation of uh, some of the tools within Microsoft uh, OneNote, Class Notebook, and Teams. And to uh, help us drive through that today, I have my colleague, Alex Heron. Thank you for being Alex. Um, and um, we are going to uh, just s learn about this new, um, really cutting edge technology that's available. So um, Alex, give us a little bit of an of a overview about um, Teams and how it fits into everything we, we're doing with Microsoft Office 365. Sure, well Teams is really bleeding edge of technology. It's only been out for a few months and we're jumping straight into it. Um, Basically, Microsoft has tried to come up with a tool for educators to use that can tie all of their products together, designed to work with students specifically. And for them, Teams is that answer. Uh, one of the things it can do is it will allow teachers to create assignments, it will allow teachers to monitor student communications, to let students collaborate with each other. And with Office 365, all these great tools that we have in there with sharing and collaboration, one of the issues is that they're all in kind of different places. You've got to go to Word, or you've got to go to OneDrive, or you've got to go to you know, your um, uh, mail to check your different things. The idea with Teams is now all of that is put into one app, including Class Notebook. Okay, so um, let's just kind of start at the beginning. Um, how do teachers or students even find Office 365, find Class Notebook, find Teams? Sure. Well. The great thing is that everyone in the world who wants to get to Office 365 gets to the exact same login site. Um, it's based off your email address, and so if, as long as you have at pcsb.org at the end of your login, it'll know who you are. So I tell people there's three ways to get there. Uh, you can type in O365, O as in office, not the number zero, okay. that happens all the time, uh, O365.pcsb.org, and that'll redirect you to the login site. Uh, you can bookmark that. You can also go through Focus. There's a link on the right-hand side for Office 365. Um, you can also just Google Office 365 login. It's the same page, like I said. So if you get to that point, you can plug in your email address and you can log in. And for yeah. students, they can also get in through Clever. I was, was going to say. I knew you were about to go there. You knew there. I was going to Clever. <laughs> yes, yeah, so those people that are already accustomed to getting onto Clever and mm -hmm. familiar with how to get onto Clever, you can get to Office 365 through Clever. That's correct. So um, you said it's cutting edge um, with with teams um, mm -hmm. is but we're not quite it's not quite there yet right for everyone in the district well that's what it means to be on the cutting edge right <laughs> uh, sometimes it has a lot of cool features and cool tools but we have to figure out how it's gonna work and so we don't want to put something out there for our students to use that we haven't fully tested and so what we're doing right now is we're testing it we're seeing how do students react in small controlled environments um, so that when we do roll it out, we know all the answers and we'll be there and ready to give those answers to teachers who are eager to use this tool. So we've done a lot of training on Class Notebook already. Mm -hmm. And um, how, so th those people that have kind of stayed with us for that conversation mm -hmm. and, and are using Office 365, using OneNote, using Class Notebook, um, this will really be a pretty seamless transition um, and just broaden um, pulling all those things together. So um, you said that we're testing it out, and the place that we're testing it out is at Tyrone uh, Middle School, uh, which is the Center for Innovation and Digital Learning. And we had a chance to talk with the principal there uh, and uh, a couple of the teachers. So um, let's hear uh, Ms. Mobley talk to us about their experience so far with Teams. We've, I believe we've been one of the trailblazers with O365 with utilizing it with our, t um, our scholars. Also this year, we, um, the district launched the application of Teams through Microsoft. I was really excited as we went to the International Society for Technology and Education this past summer and learned all about it and how the scholars could use it in the class and sure enough, um, our scholars are using it, and the kids told me one day I was in Ms. Sadowski's class, this is really awesome, Ms. Mobley, you should see this. It's really cool. Look what it does. And they were referring to the Teams app and how they could collaborate with their classmates and how uh, responsive their teachers were. 
with questions that they had and posted. It's really a collaborative space for kids to engage as much like the social media networks that they're used to. So they've really latched onto it and really are excited about the platform. So you have a long time commitment to the Tyrone community. You um, were an AP here, yes. right? And then had the opportunity to come back as a principal. Um, so wh what would you say has been the impact of the um, Center for Digital Innovation um, on the Tyrone community? Um, the uh, Center for Innovation Digital Learning, the impact it's had on the community is that we see that there's been um, a high interest and the level of instruction and um, instructional experiences that the kids are getting here that is comparable to what some are looking for in some of your um, fundamental um, and other magnet programs. In the past three years since the uh, onset of the Center for Innovation and Digital Learning, we've grown in the amount of scholars that we have on campus. We started with 88 and each year we've added another four set of classes so we're at now about 250 um, scholars in the program as well we started with a core of uh, five teachers in the program who with the collaboration of our district um, technology department partnered with what innovation and digital learning would look like in the classroom and help get um, those teachers launched on the way with innovation and digital learning and since then we've had another four or five core teachers each year so now we're at a 12 core teachers and two elective teachers technology teachers at this time so that was Miss Mobley the principal at Tyrone and um, she uh, is an innovative thinker and has pushed her staff forward she has a, a teacher there who actually the very first time I did a digital learning program, um, we visited Jesse Boyce's class. And since that time, by the way, Jesse Boyce has been nominated uh, to, and um, selected as one of the top 10 winners for Teacher of the Year. So we wish her well. And when we uh, visited her classroom, we could certainly see um, why um, she's uh, uh, why she herself is on the cutting edge um, between the use of the technology and of course her kids do have the one-to-one uh, -one, um, technology this year they're um, using little Dell laptops and as we can see they come in they they power up their their laptops they settle in and they choose their seating um, so she also has flexible seating environments and then a very welcoming um, visuals on the wall um, and encouraging messages and so um, certainly um, there is more to her classroom than just teams um, but yet teams helps facilitate her overall vision for um, a more individualized personalized approach and uh, we had a chance to hear from Jesse on um, how she has learned and progressed since the last time we visited her. Well me personally I've grown a lot um, I've been taking as much as I can to just learn how to better utilize technology and different features in my classroom. And so the basis is still the same. It's still one-to-one, -one. we're still using OneNote, but I've just been incorporating so many more educational technology um, companies and things into my class. So just, it's the same, but, but better. I also wanted to get Ms. Mobley's take on, uh, because she has been a part of the Tyrone community for so many years, um, what, how she feels this um, uh, innovative technology and way of thinking about students has impacted her school. I've noticed that uh, our kids come in maybe sometimes a couple steps ahead of us and they are born in the generation of the use of technology and social media and innovation and so they are really excited and more apt to latch on to the innovation and sometimes a little more ahead of us um, than the adults and the kids are excited they take ownership they've been very responsible we've had probably the normal um, wear and tear and damage that even the high schools have each year with the um, devices so our kids are really taking ownership of the devices and um, of their own learning and they're excited about being able to engage with O365 as well. You've worked with your kids now with three different types of uh, devices because you teach sixth grade and each year we bring in the new thing. Um, what's that progression been? 
It's been a learning curve. Um, there's a little bit of differences with each one. So I have my personal preferences. Um, like the original, the Surface is my absolute favorite, but that's for me. Um, I think that it was a little bit difficult for 11 year olds because they're so fragile. So we've just been kind of trial and error seeing which ones. Um, they all have the basic same functionality. The only difference is um, with the Surface, the digital inking was a lot easier because of a more specialized stylus. So in the math classroom, that's um, something that I've been missing. But this year we have one that just a regular stylus can work with it. So we've been able to make it work and the students are able just to um, solve their math problems just by writing on their screens, which is awesome. So because it is a center of innovation, uh, we have had several iterations of what would be the best um, piece of technology put in the hands of students. Uh, we have to, of course, consider durability um, mm -hmm. as well as function. And so um, Ms. Boyce was um, talking to us a little bit about um, the digital inking there. Um, what has been your experience with using digital ink in the math classroom? Well, I taught math for a long time, and I've used digital inking going way back to iPads and Doceri in the classroom years and years ago. Um, I think it's a great tool, and with Office 365, Microsoft has specifically designed OneNote and Class Notebook to work with digital inking built in. So it does really, really great work translating uh, written text to speech. You could make handwritten notes and have them actually be searchable, and it translates it. It's really awesome. You can draw graphs automatically, you can do um, equations that will automatically convert them into text. It's really fantastic. So I think it's designed for that natively. It's really good. So we got a bit of a word from a student in Ms. Boyce's class. Let's hear what she had to say. So Teams is an app where like the teachers create a team, which is usually they create it by their periods, the class, and then uh, people can ask questions about the class on it and stuff. And if you're sick, you can tell the teacher that you're sick and then you can get answers from your classmates and stuff. I love Teams. It has been a game changer for me. Um, it's this hub where we can have everything in the classroom all in one spot. So my students know that they can immediately go on there um, and they see any of their assignments or if they have questions. I have had students that have done makeup work and they'll just get on there really quickly and shoot me a message, hey, I finished this so that I can um, go and correct it. So it's the aspect of Portal where they can communicate with the teachers, but now they can communicate with, with our family, with our classroom family. Um, where I realized that it was such a huge thing was I was at the dentist's office. I was absent and I had recorded a video of myself just telling my students what the directions were and I placed it in Teams and I have the app on my phone so any questions they had they were able to send me right then and so I was sitting in the dentist's office answering their questions in real time while they were sitting here with a substitute and it was just this thing of oh my gosh how education has changed I'm there but I'm not there and it just they did everything that they were supposed to on that day so it was really really great. It's probably a little over and above to have teachers answering kids questions while they sit in the dentist chair. <laughs> but um, all the same, um, it, the, the fact is um, it does allow a lot of um, flexibility in the communication between teachers and students. Yeah, it's designed for communication. So it gives real-time feedback. S teachers have control of the communication in Teams. So one of my first questions when I heard about it was, can you moderate what students are saying. So they can mute students, they can delete student messages, uh, everything's archived so students can, you, we can set it so students can't delete their own messages and we can control all that. So um, from that perspective, a teacher can- So it's a safe collaboration It's space. a safe collaboration space, absolutely. I mean, in middle school, there's a lot of uh, collaboration that goes on that isn't necessarily the collaboration we're looking for. Right, but I think if they know, if the students know that they're being monitored, if they know that they're being held accountable for what they say and what they type, it makes a big difference. I mean, in my technology classroom, it definitely did. So I think that Teams is designed with that in mind, and it, like Ms. Boyce said, it, it does a really good job of that. Let's take a look, um, a closer look at Teams and what it looks like, how it's um, different than what we might have seen in the past. Sure. So this is what a Teams interface looks like. Uh, it's going to look a lot like a chat program. If anyone has ever used a program called Slack uh, or Discord, it's very similar to those programs. Um, you have a list over here of your teams. Right now, I have my favorite team, which is the one I've picked, a, a student-based uh, chat. It's a class team. I have a bunch of other teams here. Uh, you can see there's some activity going on with some different groups, but 
just for simplicity, I'm going to look at my class here. <clears throat> so your class, you would add all your students to. So your students would be in this class, and you can separate with the organizational aspect into channels. So I might have one general channel. We can just talk about anything in the class, and then we can create different channels for specific content. So I might have a channel for digital literacy. Um, if I'm a math teacher, I might have a channel for you know, my first unit, my second unit, my third unit. So we can kind of separate out uh, those subjects if we want to. That's an option. Kind of like a filing cabinet? Similar, yeah. Similar idea. Um, so each channel allows students and teachers to chat with one another. So I have some examples here. Uh, my uh, collaborators have been acting as students for me to kind of show what this looks like. So I asked uh, Stacy to send a YouTube video about technology and to post it in this message. And she was able to reply with that video. Um, and uh, she did a great job here. And then Laura commented on. So I'm going to reply one of the, this, it's kind of an ongoing joke in our department. My favorite thing about Teams is that you can respond to things not just with text, but you can also respond with animated GIFs. So I'm actually going to respond here with a thumbs up GIF. I'm a big fan of uh, the Batman thumbs up. <laughs> just to give a little bit of approval and make it a little more personal, a little more fun. Uh, these little things seem frivolous, but they really make a big difference in, in engagement. Getting, in engagement. In engagement. engagement yeah. Right. I mean, if you imagine kids trying to interact, this is how kids talk to each other these days. You know, they communicate with emojis and gifs, and so uh, integrating those actually does make a big difference in getting students to use it. So I'm kind of curious. Let, let, let's see. You you just type thumbs up, and then you got a bunch of different gifs. Yeah. For a thumbs up. Yes. So you didn't have to like sort through and go to see the Batman one. You just right. Uh, so I clicked on reply, uh -huh. and then I clicked the little GIF button here. You've got stickers too. You've got uh, emojis. You can upload your own file, so you could put a picture that you've taken yourself. But uh, from the GIF, you can then just search. So let's say smiling, for example, and you've got pictures of you know smiling that you can put in. Um, so, fun. It's just a bit of fun. It's it's a little bit of fun. <laughs> uh, it's 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 so goofy, but it's like my favorite thing in team. So I love it. Okay. So back to learning. Yeah. <laughs> um, not to get too far distracted, right? So that's just the kind of back and forth communications aspect, and it's nice to have a student be able to ask a question. Then both the teacher and other students can respond uh, to that question. Microsoft, this is not the Microsoft of the 1990s where you have to have a PC to access their tools. They are making these things completely cross-platform. Uh, they have absolutely free apps for Android, for iPhone, for iPad, um, online. So you can use them on Chromebooks even if that's what your students have. Um, where students can access these no matter what device they have. So if your students have a smartphone, they can install the Teams app and access your content anywhere they are. It's a really great way to put your stuff in front of them, no matter where they're at. Um, you know, there are also uh, programs through the district where we can provide for students who don't have uh, their own devices, but we find a lot of students really do. And, and if you don't think your students do, ask them. Do you have a computer at home? You may be surprised at what you find. Okay, so we've, we've got a whole conversation going on here. So, so the conversations are great. We love the chatting, but let's get into some more content stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we've talked before, and one of the things we focus a lot on in our training is Class Notebook. Class Notebook is one of my absolute favorite tools. It is the best. And I wouldn't ever, ever ask somebody to leave a Class Notebook to go to something new. And so what Microsoft has done is they have integrated Class Notebook into Teams. When you create a team uh, for your class, you also get a Class Notebook that goes along with it. And up at the top of our chat here, you can see you've got some tabs that are actually customizable. You can add to them. But I'm just going to click on my class notebook tab here. And uh, you'll see it's going to get it ready. Um, this is, I have a bunch of these. This is my first time using this particular one. But it will create a class notebook automatically that has all the same things that you're used to with the class notebook. It will have your content library where your students can't edit anything. So you can put your content there, um, your announcements, your things. If a kid's missing for a day, if they're absent, they can access this and not feel left behind. And they can't break it. You've got your collaboration space where students can work together. And you've got individual student notebooks where they can do their own work and you can check it without them having to actually turn any physical papers into you, which is really nice. 
So all that stuff is still here. In no the more class carrying big crates home for the weekend. No, <laughs> no more carrying big crates home for the weekend. Um, yeah, my, my wife has her all of her notebooks, and she's looking to go to class notebook uh, in the very near future just to save. Oh, she's going. She's enjoying the arm workout. I know, <laughs> but uh, going digital saves a little bit of effort, for sure. So if you're used to using class notebook, this comes with class notebook built in. So it's a really great tool for that. Um, it also has built in file storage. So what a lot of teachers do is they use OneDrive, where they'll share an assignment with their students through OneDrive. It starts to be kind of a pain because now all of a sudden, if all your students turn something into you in OneDrive, you've got you know 150 different shared with me uh, documents that are all kind of out of order, and you can't file them, and you don't know which one's which, and it's a pain to keep track of. So with Teams, you have a shared centralized location where you can put files that your kids need to find. If you have scales, that you want your kids to access. You can put them all here, or you can put them in the class notebook. Um, if you have a worksheet, if you have a project assignment, if you have pictures, if you have videos that you want your kids to see, um, one option is to put them in the files here. Now, when it comes to videos, there are other Microsoft tools like Microsoft Stream that integrates with Teams. So you could add um, all, the, all the Microsoft stuff designed to work together. So if you use any of these Microsoft tools already, the online uh, Office 365 tools, those all will work with Teams. It's designed to work with everything you already do. Just put them so all in one place. So you said about creating a class. Mm -hmm. And um, right, right now, how would a teacher do that? So what a teacher would do if they wanted to create a class, um, I right now am using the uh, downloaded app uh, for Teams. You don't have to. If you go through Chrome, you can also just go to the Teams online web app. Um, either one's fine but it looks the exact same. From here, I would go down here to Add Team. I'm just going to click on Add Team, and I'm going to create a team. So it gives you some options. If I want to create a team uh, without students for a math PLC, something like that, I can do a PLCs. You can create a staff notebook. So if you're an administrator and you want to create a staff notebook or a staff team, now you can chat with your staff in real time. A lot of applications there. Uh, you can create a staff team. That's a great idea. But for teachers, we're going to do it with classes. We're going to make a class. We're going to give it a name. Let's say give it a description if we want to. Can't spell. And then just click next to create the team. So at this point, our team's been created, and now it's going to ask us to add students and to teachers. You can create collaborative uh, structures with other teachers. So if you have a co-teacher, um, or if you have, a, let's say, another math teacher at your school who you want to be able to answer questions for your class, you can add them to this as well. So adding students here works a lot like adding students to a class notebook. You can search by name or by R2D2. So let's, uh, uh, let's take a, I know that we have, uh, one of our collaborators' uh, daughters here, we'll put her in there. We could add this student to our team. I don't want to actually do it. But you can see it pops up with the students' names as you search it. Um, so we are uh, working to make this a little bit easier. Yes. Uh, so it doesn't have to be done hand by hand. That's coming shortly to where we'll be able to upload and roster a class directly. So we do also have a little bit more vi footage from our visit to um, Tyrone Middle. We visited both a language arts class and a social studies class. And so let's uh, flip back and see how they are using um, teams within their classrooms. So I have given you two samples. We are going to evaluate, same thing that you did when you evaluated between relevant content and not relevant content. I have dropped an example of a Pitbull essay in my OneNote, in my content library. Using your criteria, and I'm going to walk around and help you, and I love what Kamora did. She actually highlighted certain criteria of what the person is going to meet. So for example, if I read this and I say, OK, they had a maintaining idea, I'm going to highlight the four. But they're missing organization for uh, completeness, I'm going to highlight the three. Then from there, you're going to see which category that student fell into. You are going to do that with this Pitbull essay. So you're going to do focus, purpose, organization, evidence, elaboration, conventions. 
Miss Boyce has said that she likes to be on the cutting edge with technology, and so one of the things is she she's, uh, has another little clip here where she's talking to us about videoing herself for the kids to access at home, um, sort of a flipped classroom. Let's hear from her. Um, the one we use the most often is called Flipgrid, and it's a video platform, so the whole idea of it is allowing those students to find their voice, those that are maybe afraid to speak up in class. Um, you can see in the back there I've got a little shower curtain hanging, and that's our recording booth. Um, so what happens is every week students have an assignment on there where they're analyzing their mistakes. So they're looking back through the, the week, and they're saying, hey, here's what we learned. Here's questions that I have, and here's a mistake I have, and something that I learned from it. And so then they discuss that, they can write it down on a whiteboard and explain what's going on, and then their peers can actually go watch it and they can respond to them. So um, I actually, my favorite way that I used it was at the beginning of the year, before I had met any of my students, I sent one home to them just as an introduction because middle school's scary, right? So they were able to introduce themselves before they were even here, and they shared what they were afraid of and what they were hopeful for. And so then you had this beautiful thing where students were saying, hey, I'm scared of meeting new people too, and they already, the first day when they stepped on campus, they already had this connection. Yeah, it was really powerful. That is powerful. Her kids, um, sixth graders notoriously come to school scared of their shadows, and here they had a chance to build community digitally. Well, it's, it's great to see kids getting into teams where they're already comfortable because it kind of mirrors what they're socially used to. It makes them feel comfortable when they go into a new school. So all this is great, but you wonder what is the actual learning involved? And I had a chance to check with the staff on that question. I'm seeing that students are persevering, and I think that that makes a huge difference, especially in the math classroom. Um, so often we're, math is hard, right? So we just want to give up as soon as we struggle. But because of this environment that we've created within my classroom of it's okay to make a mistake, it's okay to be confused. I have a saying, I always tell them confusion leads to learning. So when they tell me they're confused, I'm excited that they're confused because that means something's happening in their brain. And so we focus a lot on that and I see it translating into when they are taking those assessments that I try not to focus on very often. I just say, you know, they've got midterms next week and I said, this is just our, we just get a chance to show off our brain muscle. We're going to show them how much we've learned and we just kind of make it light so that they don't get the stress involved. But then they see whenever they're struggling with something, it's okay and that they can keep going. And I'm seeing between cycle assessments, huge increases in my data. That's so finally, Miss Mobley shared with us what her, uh, future vision is. First thing we had to do is get this started, but um, Tyrone program uh, is a magnet within a school, and uh, she shares her vision for expansion. The vision here that I've had since uh, Mr. Lawrence came and said, uh, Ms. Mobley, we're going to have the Center for Innovation and Digital <laughs> Learning, and I said, great, and we will be the center school-wide for innovation and digital learning. So the, while we have the magnet program here, um, that's application. The vision is school-wide innovation and digital learning where every kid that comes onto our campus has access to one-to-one -one technology access resources. Therefore, in our health classes, in our PE classes, in our art classes, now in our chorus and band classes, there is technology resources in there that kids can engage through technology and innovation. So I'm excited about um, just the opportunities that parents have um, with a choice in their community school here at the Center for Innovation and Digital Learning. I hope that you'll join us next time on Digital Learning where we visit Tarpon Springs Fundamental School and learn about their after-school television production program.